bless our hearts. Open our minds to receive your word. Help us, Jesus. Without your word, we are deformed. Help us to obey your word. In the name of Jesus. Father, I disappear before your children appear unto them. Speak unto them. The soul you had prepared this word for shall be an edifying partaker of it today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's be seated. Good morning, church. And happy Thanksgiving Day to everyone. Because I believe everyone seated here one day will become a Canadian citizen. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please, nobody should go to that side. Let's keep it clean. Thank you. Right from the beginning of the service, I felt the presence of Holy Spirit. It was heavy in the house. Very heavy. And um, I said to myself, wow. Wow. Praise God. God's pride. God's pride. We're supposed to look at the Father's heart today, but this topic came last week, and I'm like, oh, let's talk about God's pride. <laughs> God's pride. Our Bible test, Job 2, 1 to 13, 2 Corinthians 2, 1 to 10, John 12, 25, Job 13, 1 to 15. God's pride. Let's read our Bible test. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. I would like to talk to us as a church to be very mindful of ourselves especially when we are in the house of God do not be deceived that when men are gathered everyone is a saint the devil is always present Amen. And at that time where you feel like something is moving, something is shaking, there is always someone there to create another feelings to oppose it. Amen. I don't know if I'm really communicating as it is in my mind. Because I had noticed some things this morning as the service was also going on. And I also felt the spirit. I, a lot of things were happening at the same time in the spirit. And it's like, so many disorderliness. But we kept praying. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. 
A chosen child of God must be completely given to discernment. Completely given to discernment. My own mind too is wondering. <laughs> I'll pray it back. Um, amen. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job. Now, I wonder how important is Job that God will tell Satan in the gathering before him and God will remember just one man. Have you considered Job? Are we together? Many a times when these words come to me, it's always at my own personal time and it was an encounter, actually, this word, for my own personal self. And the word came again for a message. Has God seen you as his own pride? That he can look at the devil himself and say, Have you considered Timidayo? Are we together? A man that has had an encounter with Jesus we understand the purpose of fellowship with God. We're talking in Sunday school today and a lot of people were sharing their views. I was, my mind was in and out of the Sunday school, traveling and wondering about. I imagine God looking at me and pointing Satan. There is, a, there is a common saying in Nigeria. They said, uh, they used to say it in Europe, but I'll try to say it in English. They said, uh, like God, separate me from the devil. Like you're praying that God <laughs> separate me from the devil. Now, God is now pointing the attention of devil to you. Are we together? God's pride. And the Lord said, There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and eschewed evil, and still he holds fast his integrity. Although, that although, God is not saying, Although you, you have moved, you have tried to make me harm him without a cause. Without doing anything. Now let's go to Numbers. Numbers 12, 3. Please, somebody should read that for me. Numbers 12, 3. Numbers 12, 3. Now the man Moses was humble. The man Moses was what? Humble. Humble, yes. More so than anyone on earth. More so than anyone. And that translation said he was the meekest. Now, the Bible is talking about Job. Saying, there is none. Are we together? If I look at myself and I look at us as a church. And I ask us that in truthfulness, can we boldly say that there is none. We humans now, judging by our own selves. Can you say that, ah, this sister, there's nobody like her? Can somebody say about uh, Brajita Ramuda? There's none like him. But here is God, the revealer of all men, saying that man, upon all the earth, is a faithful man. And he pointed Satan's attention to Job. And Satan said, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for sin, skin. All that a man have will he really give for his life. But put for thy hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will cause thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, 
easy thine hand, but save his life. Now we go into the message. The devil comes to destroy without a cause. This message also corrected a notion in my own mind, like personally, when I talk, I think about, huh, if anything should happen to me, I will first of all go and check myself if I committed a sin and quickly go and repent. But now it's, God is saying it again that even as a righteous man, the devil will come to destroy without any cause. Actually, the devil want God to destroy him. And don't forget that scripture that says that God will not tempt no man. That lest anyone should say, I am tempted of God. The devil will go and take permission. But one thing God has kept was his life. And that one thing is what the devil had told God. That that life, he would give anything to save it. Are we together? Now, let's, we're going into the message. The life of man is what portrays him before God and that makes God. Now, God has not tested Job. He just believed in his uprightness. The one that molded me, the one that made me, the one that formed me says, have you seen him? Have you felt that pain and you ask yourself, why me? These are questions that I personally would look at myself and say, Hey, why is this happening to me? It's not about self-righteousness. When you look at your life and you look out, you say, hey, me or four person, why? For like two months, three months, I keep telling myself, I said, how come I live? How, how, I should have just died safe. Because life just looks so, it, it's so, it's so rough. Someone said, I want to go and do evil. I want to scam. I want to do this. I want to make money. I said, there's consequences. said, there's no consequences. Because people doing it, they are even having better life than those that are choosing to live right. Are we together? The confusion in the world. The upright are asking, why me? <laughs> Have you been confronted with life issues? And you wonder, Why? It is the devil that comes to destroy without a cause. Are we together? Have that at the back of your mind. When things happen to you, remember one thing first. The devil comes to destroy without a cause. And it's after your life and you will know why. If I ask Mr. Adenola, are you a good man? You say you're a good man, right? If you ask him, are you a very bad person? Like, are you an evil man? What would you say? No. But if he's a wicked man, he knows he's a wicked man. There's an adage that says a wicked man knows himself. He's just looking for who we tell him that he is wicked. He knows already that he's a wicked man. We all want to happy a good where wickedness abounds so greatly. But Isaac sits here. Excuse me there, at the back there. And also know that the higher you grow in life, in your walk with God. I have so many things I want to talk about, but I'm just trying to suppress and just focus on the message because of time. As you begin to walk, climb the ladder in the spiritual realm, the devil is hunting for your soul. So we sang that song. It does not come with ease. It comes with tribulations. Are we together? So if at any time you're feeling the unusual, it could be health issues. It could be financial. It could be anything that the devil will bring to torment you. It could, oh, I wish I can really go deep. It could be things that you wonder why. And also in 2 Corinthians, we talk about brother Paul. said, a messenger of death from Satan to perfect. So he recognized that it is the devil that doeth evil. Are we together? Understand that on this journey that I am, I am a target for the enemy. I am a target 
for Satan himself is after you. And in the face of these trials, have you bowed to the devil? These are questions. Have you submitted to the devil? Because he already said it, that there is nothing a man will not give for his life, to save his life. Have you scorned God? Have you imagined God as wrong? I will not lie. For many years, I'm always like, uh, God, why me? <laughs> no, scorning God is very from asking God why. Praise God. Be among those men of understanding like Job. The devil was so sure that a man will give up everything to save his life. I'll read verse 4 again. Satan replied to the Lord, and it says, skin for skin, a man would give up everything to have his life save but reach out and take away his health and he would surely curse thee he was so sure are we together he was so sure and i can tell you 99 percent of the church would we would curse god at that point only few remnants would say though he slay me how trust in him We all know that no matter how hard a situation of life is, some people are quite suicidal. I'm not talking about those who are suicidal. But like, okay, let me use Nigeria as an example. How terrible that country is right now. If anybody should hear, boom, they will not go near the gunshot. They will run away from it. And in, in many cases, we've seen people tempt families. They bring their husband, they bring their wife, and they go like, take the name, uh, kill your wife, or we kill you. And I can tell you many times, husbands will just go ahead and slaughter their wives because he wants to save his own life. Are we together? We love our lives so much. And Jesus says that he that loves his life, we lose it. But he who loses it, who, who does not love that life while he is here, would live afterward. Are we together? Romans 5, 7. Hardly will you see anyone die for a good man. How much more a terrible friend. So everyone is for themselves. Everyone is minding themselves. So can somebody please read... Um, Second Corinthians 12, 1 to 10 for me. And then we continue that Job 2, verse 6. It is necessary to brag. Which one is that? Second Corinthians Read 12. Job first, ma. 6. Job chapter 2, verse mm -hmm. 6. All right, do with him as you please. The Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence and he struck Job with terrible boils from head to toe. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. Mm -hmm. Are you reading any outside? Okay, yeah. Yeah, read on. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on, sis. There is a common thing we do to God. And which Satan knows about is one reason Satan said, take away, uh, it says, skin for skin. He will do anything to save his life. Is the fact that he knows that if everything we have is taken away, we would mock God. Many of us serve Jesus for benefits. Many of us, we serve God because if I go to church or some okay, why are people actually trying to stop paying tight? They were paying tight because if you bring money to the church, 
They say you will be blessed. You will get 10 times, whatever it is. Now, past, believe pastors are richer than <laughs> many, many pastors are rich now. So, the devil is raising the same congregation to fight against the church through tithes and offering and giving. Because it's not only tithes they are fighting. Like I said the other time, many people who's, who are fighting over tithes don't even give anything in the church. They don't give nothing to the church. And they are still the one that will frontier, ringlick those that will say, the church is coming people. So we go to church because of benefits. We talk, we, there was a message we taught last year, living sacrifice. Talk about men giving dead sacrifices. And while we are the living sacrifice, you want to bring your offering to church, dump it at the altar, and you believe you're okay to go and do all that you want to do. Yes, Sister Docas, read on now. Curse God and die. Curse God. And so, who was saying this now? His wife. His wife is telling him, curse God and die. Now, read on, ma. But Job replied. Job replied. You talk like a foolish You talk man. like a foolish, yes. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? KJV said that. Let me read KJV. KJV struck me to my to my bone. I will go there. He said, thou speaketh as one of the foolish women. Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? Now, Job believed that God is the one who is afflicting him. Please, let's, let's listen. He believed God is the one causing him the pains. And yet he said, should I just continue to get good things from God and not be ready to also receive evil? Are we together as a church? And then I think about it within ourselves. Within ourselves. Because a lot of times when we read the Bible, we should apply it to ourselves and our lives. I look at it, I said, no matter how much good you do for people, at the point where they receive something, it's not evil though now, it's not evil. Something that doesn't feel good, they don't feel good about, ha, you become their number one target for evil. Are we together? Shall we receive good from God and not receive evil? Now this is, is someone, he doesn't even know what is going on in heaven. He doesn't know who is after his life. And yet, he feels he's his own father in heaven. And he's ready to accept it. Amen. Amen. One of the best ways to test friendship is to withhold something back and say no. Then you will see how your very own best friend will become grumpy. Some might even still fake it. Be doing nice. But deep down, you, like for people that got up with discernment, like someone like me, when I look at you, when I look at your eyes, I will tell you, you can lie to yourself. You cannot lie to the spirit of God. Are we together? Ananias and Sapphira, when they appear before Peter, they, they, don't, they don't need any magician to tell them. They could discern them. When you look at me, you can tell if you're a child of God and God has blessed you with discernment. We just want to feel good. And it is evil to just always want to feel good. These are uh, cancerous cells in the church, in our lives. They have to make me feel good. Like I said, this message was a personal encounter. Like for me, I prayed with it, I cried. I, and when we share it, you can, I don't know if you notice, I'm a bit slow with the teaching. And it's because a lot of things are coming to say, but I'm controlling words within. Check yourself. Because when we gather together, I want us to go back home. Thinking about the word that came out. And ask yourself, 
have I been a Christian truly? Why do we have so much? Like I, when I hear someone say, "Brother, this do this, sister this," I'm like, hasn't that person been ever good to you? Can you receive good from someone and not receive evil? No. Our heart is dark and gr- gross. And we can be very destructive the moment things are not going the way we want. The moment the calamities start coming, we can be very destructive. Wife to husband, husband to wife, sister to brother, brothers to sisters. Very destructive. Must it always be good? This part is very important to me. No, it doesn't have to always be good. God search within. He sees us beyond us. He knows how we are. I was going to share an encounter I had when I was pregnant for Horeo Lu. I was in 2018. I had that encounter. And it was more like I committed a sin in that dream and then uh, I was sentenced to be killed in the dream. And they sentenced me to death. But I said, God, I have repented. They still want me to die. <laughs> but then they said, I have to die. I went together. So I was killed in the dream. And then when I was killed, my spirit transcend. In fact, I tra- my spirit traveled through the waters, under the oceans, into the heavens. And then I arrived. I cannot explain. I just found myself, bim. And then this scripture came. Revelations, I think Revelations uh, 1, when John appeared before God, and his, Jesus is standing as a judge. I was at the feet, and I was crying. I made heaven, I made heaven, I made heaven. Because, you know, when you commit a sin, and you, for, you feel like you've been forgiven, and they still kill you. You're like, ah, this is hell you are going to. And I started crying. I made heaven. I made, at, right at the feet, I could not look up. When you talk about transactions of heaven, I couldn't look up. I was weeping. I made heaven. Just that word, I made heaven. I made, and then they said, take her to the banquet. Very few, I cannot count four people that I saw. Big. I sat there, you know, shaking, shaking with so much fear. And I took, they gave me a menu. My body was shaking. Then it was as if there's a big screen. Men were seated, looking, and I heard a voice. Let us see how the life of this, they mentioned the name of the pastor here on earth, here in Surrey. Let's see how his life will end. Then I woke up. No, before I woke up, I was saying that, can nobody go and tell them that? I make heaven. <laughs> that making heaven was so important to me. Like, can you go and tell them I made heaven? Then I woke up. I woke up sweating. It was broad day afternoon. I started crying. I don't want to wake up. I started crying. I want to go back. It's not a joke. I don't know if Sadokas can remember. I wept. I want to go back. Ah, no, not again. I'm done here. Yeah, let me just go. Because <laughs> I've made it. I've made it. No more trials. Do you understand? Transactions in heaven. If God could recognize that pastor, it means a lot. Even though when I shared that revelation with the pastor, two weeks after, he also said he had a similar dream. But I can tell you today that I doubt if that man of God is still paying attention. But his name was mentioned in heaven. Are we together? His name was mentioned. Personal encounter, when I talk about encounters, not the way I talk about encounters, it's always like, a, it's not joko. Encounters that you will wake up with and you, your life is like, nah, this place is not here, this is not where I want to be. You've been dissociated from the head. You just want to be there because you've seen, you've experienced it. When I tell people you cannot scare me with death. You can't scare a dead. I'm a dead woman already. You can't scare me with death. I'm even waiting. Anticipating it so strongly. 
Check yourself. Check your life. How are you walking? Are you God's pride? Is God proud of you? Can everyone look down and say, let us see how Francis would end. Let's see how Emmanuel will end. Let's see how uh, Soya will end. Can everyone speak of such about you? Are you recognized? Are you among those the Father is conscious of? Your sanctification is beckoning in heaven. Are we together? Are you one that daily you feel the eats, the trials, the temptations of this world? Daily you feel like you are all by yourself in the world. You feel like everything around your environment is against you. But yet you are the pride of the Father. Are you? What shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? What? Ashes for ashes. Everything we have, we would live. And that you, the life that God has given you, is the life of God inside of you. That must be preserved. The devil believes that if he comes and lays his hand on you, take away everything, remove everything, because you want to save that life, you will curse God. Don't let him prevail. Say, I will not let him prevail. No matter what comes my way, I will not give up on God, because he did not give up on me. Amen. Our attitude to disappointments. I remember fasting. Dry fast. The first time I knew that I had kids with sickle cell, I was destabilized. I said, how can I be a Christian and this will happen to me? I am one that is very proud when it comes to uh, because God has helped me in the place of healing. So, in my head, I'm like, nah, this is, <clears throat> no. Ha. I went into fasting and prayer. Not small fasting, no. I was continuously on dry fast. If we know dry fast. I, if you see me, I'm like, pencil. I went, crying, talking about 2015. And my life, it, it became a burden. Rather, I went closer to God. The first child was what was, I found out when Joseph was born. And they later found out another baby had it. Then I'm like, hey, two. How oh, now? Because I'm aware, I know, in my, my family, we, my, my, we have seen cases. So I'm aware of how terrible it could be. So I'm like, why me? <laughs> what have I done wrong? Like, this was I'm dealing with. Is it not enough? Why would God add this again to my pain? Do you understand? And I could tell you that last year, when Emmanuel is seated here, when we were in the hospital, I could not pray. He canceled his shift for days. He was at the hospital praying. I would just look at him. I was like a dead woman. Because the only thing on my mind is, what have I done now? Why should this be happening to me? Even when the boy died and they called us, this one stopped picking my calls. She was the one in the hospital when they called and he was calling Emmanuel. Nobody was talking to me. I said, you people should just kill me. <laughs> it's not a joke. They were praying. I could not pray. Because the only question, I'm saying this because I want you to understand that when you are a child of God, that God is intentional about, it's not, it does not matter about anything that is precious to you. One thing we have our mothers here that a woman will not want to lose in life is a child. Are we together? No mother wants to lose a child. I cannot even comprehend. I was packaging myself always. I ran out from upstairs outside the gate. I said, what have I done? All the tenants, they came after me. What happened? I said, I don't know. I was going mad. And to think we're planning their father's burial. It became too much. But thank God for the people God puts 
around us to support. Even though with their presence, I was alienated from everything. Pain! So I'm saying this because you need to, when you are within your closet, you are by yourself. And nobody is there to, to reckon with you, to think with you. Do not let anyone make you think that you are not a child of God. Rather believe that it is the devil that destroys for no cause. And it would come after you in ways that if you are not careful, you will speak against God. Bible says in all things, give thanks. By the time before we got to the hospital, actually they were all praying in the car. They said he started breathing. She called them. She didn't call me. She wasn't talking to me. Said he's coming back. He's, right? Is that not what you said? Said he was responding. I said, when we got there, I stood and said, hey, hey, what have I done? <laughs> That's the question. What have I done? Because of what use is life, when you start seeing all this as a woman, it becomes too overwhelming. And so also, that's why I tell people, I said, each time I counsel people, it's like I've joined their life. I've once been in their shoe. But one thing I tell God, I don't want to be in the shoe of those that lose a child. It was a covenant I made with God. I, can, I don't think I will live the next day to talk about it. You know, when you understand your God who knows your frame, and it's not as if I cannot give it to God. But it got to a point, the Lord encountered me. Hallelujah. He came back with the word and he told me never to think about the children. He would take care of them. Whatever he will do, I don't know. But he gave me that word and I believe. So, rest in the Lord. Even in the storm. Whatever it is, when you meet yourself in that storm, believe God. If the devil say, there is nothing a dead day will not do to save our life, tell the devil, the life is no longer my life. The life that I live, it is the life of God. My existence on earth, I live for Jesus. Are we together? It's no longer your life. Everything you have is not yours. Actually, I later on, God taught me the point that even these children, you are only a guardian. If you are not here today, they will leave. In actual fact, I can say they would leave and God will still keep them. God will raise prophets, pastors among them, and they will preach. So I have to I'm talking about encounters that changes men. Do not let it overwhelm you. Don't let it break you down. Nothing on the earth should put you at the point where the devil will triumph over your life. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 5 to 10. Uh, somebody should quickly read Job 13, 1 to 15 for me. KJV. You go like we're doing KJV today. <laughs> Job 13, 1 to 5. Job 13, 1 to 5. Yes. Lo. This man is in pain. Let's pay attention. Let's read together. He's in pain. He's, he's groaning. Yes. What, does this, what did he say? He said, Lo. Lo. My eyes have seen all this. Mm -hmm. My ear has heard and understood it. Mm -hmm. What ye know, the same do I know also. Aha. Uh -huh. I am not inferior unto you. Mm -hmm. Surely, I mm -hmm. will speak to the Almighty. Uh -huh. And I desire to reason with God. Uh -huh. But ye are forgers of lies. Mm -hmm. Ye are all physicians, physicians of, of no value. value. Yes. Oh, that ye would altogether hold your peace. Uh -huh. And it shall it should it should be, be your, your wisdom. wisdom. Mm -hmm. Six. Yes. Hear now my reasoning mm -hmm. and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Uh -huh. Will ye speak wickedly of God uh -huh. and talk deceitfully for him? Ask yourself, will I join men to speak wickedly of God? Aha, uh -huh. read on, ma. 
Will ye accept his person? Aha. Will ye contend for Will God? Will you contend for God? Yes, read on. Is it good that he should set you out? Aha. Or as one man mocketh another, mm-hmm. do you also mock him? <laughs> he will surely... Oh, no. Do we understand what she's reading? Or should I explain? I should explain. Okay. Verse what is that? Is, is it good that he should set you out? Or as one man mocks another? Like we enjoy to mock ourselves. So should we also mock God <laughs> like this? Do you understand the depth of Job's wisdom? Like even if everyone is doing this, is he God in his sovereignty? When I read this scripture, I was crying. When men have deep understanding of God. That was why I started with your fellowship with God. Your fellowship with God will take you through a lot. And men will keep wondering, how are you doing it? You yourself, you cannot explain it. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of God. And God alone, him alone, will take the glory. Amen. Read on, man. He will surely reprove you. He will surely reprove you. If you do secretly accept persons, Aha. shall not his excellency make you afraid? Should you, you be scared of his, of his royalty, your excellency, ma? We bow to men, your excellency, sir. We see kings, we go all out, we can't be a CEO. And God, shouldn't you be scared of his excellency? There is a strange doctrine now. Um, I was going to say Jesus because I'm also Jesus baby. But there is a way people <laughs> reference God and it's like Jesus is my father. All this madness in the church. And they just be behaving anyhow. And you'll be asking, is this in the house of God? Is this in the presence of God? When many of them are before kings, they cannot behave like this. They don't act unruly. The freedom we have in Jesus is not to be reckless. It is in sobriety. In reference. Not, not like you are scared. We are not scared of God. He's our father. Are we together? John rested on his chest when he was alive. But when John saw him in judgment, he was at his feet. The sovereignty of God. Are we together? Yes, read on, ma. And his dread fall upon you. Yeah. Your remembrance are like unto ashes. Your remembrance whose remembrance Moi, or all of us <laughs> amen we did it again ma your remembrance are like unto ashes your bodies to bodies of clay please are we reading the bible like us Abasha is there we all, they, my Ghanaian brothers do you know Abasha you don't know Abasha ha that president <laughs> even me I know him Ha! You know him? Yes. Abacha, God bless you. Abacha. <laughs> ha! Where is he? Decayed. Under the earth. His reign was like <laughs> gone for gone. And we see many like that. When I see people the way they just <laughs> I'm like, hey! How? Why? Like, How? <laughs> Literally, that's the way. I, I'm like, what is it? Ah, drop the power. You don't even have any. Him that holds the power, that have the power, can just silence you in one second. Why? Live when you go out there. Live and see yourself like nothing. Your existence should not be a threat to another. Sister, Dio shouldn't be scared to come to Brother Emmanuel. Why should she be scared? Why? Are we together? Why? Why should men tremble at your feet? Why? No, no reason. A lot of times when somebody say, Oh, I'm scared to go and talk to I say, You are a wicked person. Why are you scared? Have I portrayed anything that looks like fear? No. Someone told Saul, if you had done well, would you be hasty to, to respond? Eh? If you had done well, if, if your life is good, you should be eager to 
approach your fellow brethren. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Read on, man. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Let me alone that <laughs> I may speak. And let come on me that will. Aha. Uh -huh. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Uh -huh. Though he So can you, can you say to yourself, wherefore do I put, take my flesh? Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Isn't that life that the devil said he was going to give? Like he would, he would, he would, he would save it. He would give everything to skip that life. Now he said what? Why should I do what? Read it, please, sister. Put my life in my hand. Like why should you kept it there? You want to keep it? Then he said, even though, though he, slay he me, slays me, yet I will trust in he him. He said he will trust God. Yes. Even though God kills him, even in his grave, he will trust God. Have you gotten to that place with God? Where you've received salvation to a point that if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. It is not a word. It is a life. It is not, I join them to say it. It is a life. And it speaks through every other aspect of your life. The crucified life. Even though I would be killed, I would trust in God. Even if men would crucify me, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Second Corinthians 12, please. 5 to 10. And then we'll round up. I'll brag about this man, but mm -hmm. I won't brag about myself, except to brag about Slowly, my... ma. These are men with understanding. He said he will not brag about himself. Yes, read on. Except to brag about my weaknesses. Please, I want the attention of everybody. Has anyone been told that oh, when you're going through challenges, you don't talk about it? Huh? You have to keep it secret. Huh? You have a Silence is good. Silence is good. In the church, oh, this is the apostle saying, I will brag. Do you know what it means to brag about your weaknesses? To brag about your problems. I made a video and one pastor, Richard, said, ah, such like this video, you're very vulnerable. Uh, men would think this. I said, it is the gospel of Christ. They might think, let them think what the thousands they want to think. My name is Olusho. I remain Jesus' baby. It doesn't change who I am. Because today, people are fake. Today, many people are not real. That's why you see many men of God. Even though they will beat their wives in the house, they will come back and say, oh, my beautiful wife is here today. At least when you see a pastor say, I have a weakness of beating my wife. And I can tell you, if that pastor can say, I have a weakness of beating my wife, a lot of members will give their life to Jesus. Because at the time that you become nothing in the presence of God, and you see yourself, you could repent, you could speak of everything that is filthy in your life. It humbles men. It humbles other people. Not like you fornicate to say it will be difficult. If you are a child of God that is broken, you will speak it without fear. Because you believe that the power of God must work for you. Yes, read on, man. If I did want to brag, yes. I wouldn't make a fool of myself because I'd tell the truth. Uh -huh. I'm holding back from bragging so that no one will give me any more credit. Than and that was after he talked about the revelation he had about the heaven. Yes, read on now quickly, please. It's look at time. Then what anyone sees or hears about me. Uh -huh. I was given a thorn in my body because of the understanding revelations. If we look at the story we read in writings of Paul, he talks about when, when at the church he was writing to and he said they accepted him even though he was sick, right? Family. So even in his sickness, they accepted him. He never hide. One man I love the most in the Bible is Paul. 
he never hides any parts of himself. He, he does not. Because if you are a Christian, I keep saying this, a child of God, you ought not be the body that is, is what? Clay. If you are battling with any addiction, if you've given your life to Jesus, walk up to fellow believers and share it with them. Now, your fear is that they will use it to speak against you. Leave them with Jesus. That's what I tell people. If I tell you my story and you mock me, it is between you and God. It's got nothing on me. It's on you. As for me, I would be a child of God. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Read on, Sister Dockers. Because of the outstanding revelations I've received, so that I wouldn't be... Which translation are you reading? Common English Bible. NLT, please. If somebody is there, please read. What verse are you? Verse 7. Even oh. though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, uh -huh. so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. In, so he understood the purpose of that illness to stop him from becoming proud. Are we together? There was a day I was talking to is it Brian Manuel? I think he is. And I, we were sharing minds. And he mentioned, he said, one thing God helped him with, like he's been equipped to not fornicate. But if he's talking to other people who are addicts of fornication, he, will, he cannot judge them because he has that strength. Are we together? But I tell you many Christians will judge another person because they have that they are equipped. Because your own weakness might be another person's strength. And your own strength might be somebody else's weakness. Why do you judge them? So, so God put that in him to humble him. Are we together? Are we together? I had a revelation that blood transfusion was done on my son. The whole blood was taken out. Another blood was put in. And I took them. I said, the blood has changed. Yeah. And they did the test. The blood is still giving me. I said, ah. You know, when God is walking, there's a way he walks. He, cripple, he, he breaks you like that. And a lot of times, I will not lie to us. When the case is brought to me to pray on, since then, hey, I say, God has no you. <laughs> the pride at which I pray for people for healing before reduces. And before I would pray, I will say, God, I hope you will heal this one. <laughs> Are we together? So it's like God is checking, checking. It happened recently. And I, the only thing I could do was just cry. I say, God, this one you have to do it though. <laughs> because the ones you have, there are still some you have not done. This one, I want it done. And God did it. So what I'm trying to tell us is that, check it. That thing that you think you are good at, your fault. God will bring something that would to slow you down. Be aware. Be discerning. Submit to God. Yes, Sister Docas, read it. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Apostle Paul prayed three different times. I can't count how many times me have been. <laughs> not, not just that alone. All that things. All that things. Not just that alone. I can tell you for eight years, every month, eight years, Babu, 2013 till now is how many years? 11. Every month, I will cry, say, God, how long now? <laughs> this one is taking too long. But the truth is, I've met a lot of people on my journey that also have the same pain. And I'll be like, oh, I also feel it too. And I started doing research. Read. A, a woman of God shared a testimony where a sister doesn't come to church and the sister said, oh, she break her back. She now said, no, she has back pain. The woman, of, the woman of God mocked her in her heart that why won't you have back pain since you don't come to church? In her heart. The next day, her back struck her. And she started going to the hospital. <laughs> Nothing happened. And then God said, I just want you to feel it. At least you, you are the pastor's wife. You sleep in the church. Are we together? God's pride. When God is walking upon you, be happy. 
take it all for joy. Embrace Jesus. And then Apostle Paul said, Yes, my man. Time he said, my grace, is, my all grace is all you need. There was another revelation I had, which is an encounter too. I woke up and it was that scripture the Lord used to speak to me. And I also wept again. Uh, your, my grace, that fan, please. My grace is all you need. Let's stand up and pray to God. Said at that point where you feel like the eat is too much, at a time when it feels like the whole world is crumbling on you. It's like they've thrown a, a, a whole mountain boom, to land on your head and you, are, you can't move. You are broken. So God, Jesus said, ah, Apostle Paul said, your grace is all I need. He said, for your power works best in weakness. Submit to God. Understand that he's at work in you. He would preserve you. Say, God, help me to submit to you. Keep me. Do not let the devil triumph over my life. Do not let me submit to the wishes of the devil. The devil was so proud. He said, skin for skin. There's nothing he will not give to save his life. Say, Father, no matter what comes my way, I remain your pride. I remain the child you point out. That is my daughter. Say, Lord, it is you. Nothing. Nothing on heads. Nothing that I have will take my heart away from you. At this moment of weakness, I will understand your sovereignty. At this moment of weakness, I will understand your power that is at work. At this moment of weakness, I would recognize you that has created and formed me in your image. Help me, Father. So, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. I pray for your children. At that moment that the devil is on them for no cause. At that moment that the storms of life is at their <laughs> overwhelming and crushing. Jesus, I pray that you release upon their lives the grace to journey. They will not curse you. Because you have marked them. That's why the devil can recognize them. Because you point the attention of devil to them. These are your pride. They are your children. The ones you have called and you have redeemed for your own selves. Lord, I pray that they will not fail you. They will not become like demons that left and go back to the world. They will not reject you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that they have owed so dear. Whatever it is they've held so dear. Whatever it might be, Father. We ask that they will count it all for dung because of your name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your word. I pray upon their hearts that this word will chase them. This word will continually be upon their hearts. They will remember that what is this? Shall we receive good from God and not receive evil? They will always know that life is not always good. And they will embrace the reality in your word. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed.